Hello and welcome to yet another repair tutorial video featuring the Panasonic ES2206 Ladies Wet Slash Dry Shaver. This shaver was given to me by my mother-in-law and was interested to see if this device can be repaired. So let's get right into it, shall we? First, let's see whether this shaver can even hold a charge. I found a working power strip nearby and connected the shaver's AC adapter to one of the six outlets. At a glance, we can see that the charging indicator LED is dimly lit. Heck, I'm starting to think that she probably forgot to charge this thing. Let's let it charge for a good hour and see what our conclusion develops into. One hour later. Dang it. This darn shaver is not turning on. I guess we're not going to catch a break on this, huh? Time to dismantle the shaver and get to the bottom of this. <laughs> Hmm, that wasn't so bad. The obvious thing that we ought to check for first would be the battery's voltage. So let's whip out our trusty Fluke multimeter to perform some checking. Dial the multimeter to DC and connect the black probe to the battery's anode followed by the red probe to its cathode. Hmm, rip. Safe to say that this battery is pronounced dead. This is good, this is no problem. All we need to do now is find its replacement battery online. Problem is that it's going to cost over $20 and it's going to take nearly a week for the item to arrive. Did a bit of research on the ES2206's battery and discovered that it's a standard 1.5 volt AA battery. Just so happened to find a working AA battery hidden away within my storage bin. So for the sake of this project, let's implement three modifications to get the shaver up and running. The first mod will be to retract the anode's terminal by cutting the black plastic underneath and bending it to an upward angle so that the AA battery can stay intact within the holder, like this. Beautiful. The second mod will be to remove the rod behind the battery. The rod was initially jammed within the circuit's adjacent contacts to keep the circuit in an open status while the shaver was in the charge position. The user was not able to turn the shaver on if the AC adapter was connected. We don't need that rod to be present anymore because we're eliminating the adapter altogether. <laughs> Perfect. Now, there were some minor difficulties with the inner blade of the shaver when the function was in its on state. The blade would only rattle if pressed firmly toward its spinning connector, which leads us to our third and final mod of this project, and that is the addition of the tiny rubber grommet. This is the same tiny grommet that was attached to the end of the removed rod. Its usage here will be to stabilize the blade's strong rattle to a consistent basis when the switch is turned on. Hey, 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 it's spinning. Voila, a functioning ES2206 shaver, spending no money whatsoever. The only downfall though is that it's no longer waterproof and you'd have to disassemble the darn thing to replace the battery whenever it gets to low charge. However, this device works exactly as intended. 
My recommendation is to simply purchase a new shaver later down the road. It's roughly the same price as a new replacement battery anyway. I hope you found this repair tutorial useful. Again, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more repair videos. Later! Yeah.